Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 5th Annual Fanny Awards! Please put your hands together for your host, Andrew Fantasia! Hey, that's my name that the announcer just said. Welcome, welcome one and all to the 2019 Fanny Awards already. We're here already. The Fanny Awards are here. It feels like just yesterday when I started the very first Fanny Award. It was so old, I didn't even have a channel. I just wrote it all down on Facebook and assumed people would read nine paragraphs a day of my ramblings. My God, was I ever naive. But quit living in the past, man. You're living in the past. We're here to talk about the past, but only the past year. That's as far back in the past as we go. We're going to talk about 2019. What movies made the cut for me? On day one, I don't give out any special awards. I just give out the award for my 10th favorite film of the year. What was my 10th favorite film of the year? Let me tell you something. Whenever anybody makes top 10s, which on YouTube doesn't happen very often, or so I'm told, the hardest one to choose always is this one. Is number 10. Number 10 is always the hardest one to choose. So this one fluctuated a lot for me, more than any other movie. But I have finally come to my final decision and decided that my number 10 film of the year is Joker. Yes, a lot of folks would like this to be much, much higher on the list. But frankly, Joker fits in nice and snugly at the number 10 spot for me, and here's why. I am a person who is of the mind that the Joker is the most overused comic book character ever. Actually, you know what? I'm going to dial that back and change that. I think he's the most overused fictional character, period. With the exception of maybe, like, Robin Hood. Those two should just get into a room together and talk about how much they just keep getting used by people. So when DC announced that they were making a Joker movie, I was like, oh dear Lord, can we please focus on somebody else? Can we please focus on the Riddler or something? Because you know what? The Riddler is pretty cool too. We, We don't give him enough love. But no, they made a Joker movie. Todd Phillips sat down and he made a Joker movie and it was kind of like Taxi Driver, but with less taxis and, and more Jokers. And you know what? It ended up being pretty damn good. I don't think it was a magnificent masterpiece. I don't think it was an absolutely sparkling dark mirror held up to reflect the darkness of our own society. I don't think it's the masterful work of psychological craft that a lot of people are touting it to be. If you don't believe me, then look no further than the nominations for this year's Academy Awards. Joker's all over that. No, I think this is just a very artistic, well-done comic book movie that scratches a lot of the right itches for me. Because yes, I'm not a huge Joker fan, but I'll tell you what I am a fan of, the 1980s. I love the aesthetic of the 1980s, and I also am a huge fan of Gotham City. Gotham City happens to be my favorite Batman character. So, seeing a film where it's Gotham City covered in the gloom and grit of the 80s, chocolate and peanut butter, sweetheart. Chocolate and peanut butter. And the movie we got out of it is pretty good, too. It's a very decent story. It doesn't do anything too crazy or outside of the norm. It kind of stays to, you know, the the predictable scale. It kind of keeps it where you imagine it would go. But it does take a couple turns where you're like, oh, that's really neat. And it keeps you engaged right up until the very end. And at the very end, I was like, you know what? That final line that Joaquin Phoenix delivered, that is the Joker. It It, it is the most Jokery Joker I have seen outside of of the cartoon where Mark Hamill played him with delicious, lovely enthusiasm. That was the most Joker I had ever... That was the the most accurate live-action Joker I had ever seen, right there at the end, where he's sitting in the asylum and he says that line that I'm not going to spoil, just in case. So overall, it hit the sweet spots. It took some turns that I was digging, and it didn't do anything that kind of 
made me tired of a character I was already tired of. It kept him not fresh, but just interesting enough that I wasn't wishing I was watching The Riddler instead. I know that doesn't sound like a whole heap of praise, and you're probably wondering why the hell did this guy even put this in his top tens of the Fanny Awards? Well, that's because I'm still very impressed with the fact that they managed to take a character that I was 100% sick and tired of and make me sit in a room with this character for two hours and never once was I sick and tired of him. At the two-hour point when the movie ends, I was like, you know what? I could watch another two hours of this. I am really enjoying this. Yes, maybe it's because I was getting my fix of 80s culture and Gotham culture, but it was also because it was a great character piece. And it dived into the world of Batman, which is never not interesting. You can never not have fun in the world of Batman. It's just, it's not possible. So Joker, congratulations to you, Clown Prince of Crime. You absolutely earned that very tricky, tumultuous number 10 spot. Tomorrow on the Fanny Awards, we learn which movie I consider to be my number 9 favorite film of the year and we're giving out a special fanny award for best hero who was the most heroic best role model in cinema this year i think i have a pretty good idea who it might be and you all might have the same idea too but we'll see when tomorrow comes until then i'm andrew fantasia and the fanny awards will continue <laughs>